Okay, so today I'm going to make some, um, some water-soluble calcium nitrate, which I use in my hydroponics, but you can also use it for a bunch of other things as well. Um, I'm going to show my process. There's a lot of videos online on how to make it, but I'm going to show my process because it's a little bit different, and most notably because I very finely grind up um, the eggshells when I'm done, and you'll see how that it looks like it speeds up the reaction time, which is really nice. But before I get started, I want to pose a question to all of you, your chemistry nuts out there. Um, what I'm wondering, and this is kind of the end result right here, where you do your, fi you do your final filtration and, and you get nice and clear stuff. You don't want any organic material in there for anything to grow, because I'm going to might store this for a while. But my question to all you chemistry nuts is, how can I tell that what in here is just pure calcium nitrate. So I've done, I don't know what you call it, dilutions of this, uh, because this I can't even measure with my, uh, with my EC meter. I have to actually water it down to even get a reading. Um, and I've made some notes in my book about um, how can I get an equivalent, I guess, when I make my five gallon recipe, I've figured out how much of this I need for my five gallon recipe because I basically dilute it down, take an EC reading for what's appropriate for five gallon recipe. That's great. So my last thing that I need to nail in place before I start, because I'm still really scared to use this in my hydroponics. I haven't done it yet because I don't want to kill all my hydroponics because I don't do it right. So my question is, great, I can get the right dilution and get the right EC level for a five gallon recipe. That's easy. But is this equal to the uh, calcium, the, the calcium nitrate, like what, little pellets that you get and you mix in with water, is that, and, and I make a five gallon recipe with that, is that equal to the, the power grow stuff that I buy online? And so that I don't know the answer to. What I've done with this is I made a recipe, uh, and then I did, I think it's like two cups of vinegar with two tablespoons of this eggshell powder to keep it consistent. I don't know what the actual measurements are. I have it in a, in a notebook somewhere. But I did that, let it sit for a day, which is way more than you need to with the, the finely crushed up egg powder. Um, then I filtered it like this. And then the other day I was like, well, let's see if there's still enough acidity in the vinegar to take some more egg powder, so, so eggshell powder. So I put another tablespoon in there um, and let it sit overnight. It definitely didn't react nearly as much, but I did see some bubbles, so um, I'm assuming that it, it soaked up more. Um, maybe it's just being more patient and just keep go like keep, let it set for a while and, and you know if you have to run this twice, run it twice until it until the reaction stops. I think that might be the answer. But anyway, I'm going to uh, go on with my process here. So essentially I have I, I basically take these eggs and when I'm done with you know I just put them back in the container and then once a container gets used throw it in the freezer until I have a good amount of them saved up um, what I this next step is not entirely necessary but is something that I'm going to do because I'm trying to um, knock out all the variables of course with these eggshells you do have some organic material leftover egg so what I'm doing is I'm going to just give it a, a really simple rinse I don't want it to be over complicated or take too long so I'm just going to give it a really simple wash I'm going to throw it on this pan and then I'm going to toss it in the oven for an hour and bake it at 350 for one hour um, the, the purpose of that of course is to bake off any organic residue so that I'm just left with the eggshells. Now, this is, this is again, another question for the, um, uh, the, the chemistry nuts out there. So I am baking off the egg residue on here. So I should be left with just the calcium for the shells. And then I'm guessing all of that egg residue is gonna turn in and like the little skin in here. That's also like not calcium. I'm guessing that's all gonna turn, if you bake it long enough, I'm guessing that all turns to carbon. So then when you are reacting that with the vinegar, is that, what effect is that gonna have? What is the vinegar gonna do to the carbon? Does it matter? Is it all gonna filter out? Um, yeah, so those are the kind of, yeah. So we'll see, 
I don't really know how to test that. I, I, can, I can test EC levels, but I can't tell you the composition of what that is. Uh, it should be calcium nitrate. Okay, so I'm going to just uh, do some hot water. Boom. And then I'm going to wash the shells. I'm gonna edit this so you don't have to watch boring egg washing all day. But I have very hot tap water, so that makes it really easy. Now these eggshells are these eggshells are stuck together, and I used to. Um, be concerned about that. Uh, I'm not. I just give it a quick rinse and I'm going to start throwing them on the pan. Okay. Egg cells are cleaned. Again, in my humble opinion, I don't think that pro that uh, step is entirely necessary as you're going to bake off any kind of uh, impurities anyway. Um, timer is set to one hour, 350 degrees. I'm going to throw that puppy in there and then we're going to have very brittle, very crushable eggshells uh, when we're done. Okay, ding, ding, ding. It's done. Okay, so essentially, as you can see, a lot of that, the egg material has kind of been cooked off. And that's kind of my million dollar question that I have very, very hot. Um, is what is the what is the remainder material in there is there anything like worth even considering it or is it all just like turned into carbon um, and then i shouldn't worry about it in my solution don't really know but essentially you can hear them they're kind of kind of crisping like rice krispies but at this point i just kind of take something maybe some put some gloves on because they're super hot and i just kind of give them a little a quick flush um because then you're putting them into the vitamix and that's the really fun part. Sometimes I use a jar for this. Maybe I'll do that because they're super hot and using this uh, the pot holder is not really working out. There we go. Jar to the rescue. Boom. And now they're flying everywhere. You know what? Here, I'm going to do this really easy way. Dry counter, as long as it's dry. There we go. All over the counter. Oh, good. Put them right over that pot holder. Didn't mean to do that. And then smashy, smashy. All right, since this is super fun doing with one hand, I'm gonna edit that out. Okay, so in the end, I just kind of ended up picking them up with my hands and crushing them. You gotta be careful when you do that because they're really hot when they come out of the oven. So maybe you're a little smarter than me and you let them cool for a little bit first. But anyway, the whole point of this, I'm just making sure that they're small enough so that I can fit them all into that there Vitamix right over there. Cut to them being in the Vitamix. Okay, so this essentially is why I'm doing this video because there's a million videos already out there about people making uh, calcium nitrates uh, out of eggshells and vinegar. This is really the only difference, but I think it makes a big difference, so it's worth, uh, worth giving a look over. So I just kind of start this thing on low. And then I just start cranking her up. That's it. Oh, might need to use the little plunger. Maybe. Let's see. Let's we'll vary the speed a little bit. This eggshell, these eggshells almost start forming a into a liquid almost. Yeah, yeah, check this out. All right, here we go. Let's get a real close up of this. Now, I think about 
using a mask when I do this, and you will see why. And when I say I think about using a mask when I do this, I'm definitely not wearing a mask. I probably should. Yeah, maybe you saw that, maybe you didn't. But it's a lot of egg dust, eggshell dust. I don't know if I want to breathe that in. But uh, this is what you get. Well, I'll pour this. Okay, Hydroponic Journal says... Um, and this is all, this, this is from a while ago, but I'm going to use the same measurements because I want to have as few variables as possible. Um, looks like I'm starting with one cup of distilled white vinegar, the exact same brand, which has a starting EC of 1.5 and a starting pH of 2.3. Now, when you're done with this, you, you, uh, you can't read the EC on most uh, home uh, uh, EC readers, you, uh, unless you have a really good one. Um, so you have to do a dilution, which I marked down here somewhere, probably on a different page. Um, but yep, yeah, we're going to do, I think it's one cup and two tablespoons of eggshells. And I, I I'm going to let it sit overnight, but you can tell if you keep walking back to it, like an hour later and an hour later, the bulk of the reaction really happens within the first hour. And it's because it's really nicely finely ground, which I highly recommend if you have like a, like a Vitamix or something like that, um, it just turns the eggshell into powder. So this is what you end up with. Ooh, yeah, that's why you wear a mask. <laughs> That step right there. A lot of dust. But yeah, as you can see, like super fine eggshell powder. Um, a lot of uses. You could toss that right into a garden or you can mix it with vinegar. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of column A, column B. But uh, yeah, it really helps it mix in with the vinegar. Okay, so this is the super fun part. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, look at that, look at that stuff. Not my ter terrible camera work, but this nice fine powder that I'm trying to be super accurate with and I'm not uh, succeeding. I pull that back. Oh, that makes it easier. One. Now, maybe I should be adding the vinegar first, but uh, I'm gonna go with, might not matter so much. Feel free to chime in about that. I know my uh, hydroponic ingredients, it definitely matters. You have to do liquid first for the hydroponic mixtures that I make. This, since it's gonna be a reaction, I'm gonna go with, doesn't matter so much. All right, now check this out. This is the cool, this is, this is the big difference between the other videos that I've seen and, and kind of what I do. And it's just, it's just the simple fact that I've dried this stuff out and powderized it. And now my one cup of vinegar, here we go. And look at it go. It just bubbles right up. I wonder if I can, I gotta get something for this uh, camera. This has gotta be some infuriating camera work here. I try to get right up close. So it doesn't take any time at all for this, for the bubbles to form. It immediately just starts reacting and it actually even makes this like <laughs> foamy head. Now. This uh, this can get a little stinky, um, so you might want a little bit of ventilation um, and try to have a jar that, see, this jar that I'm using is much larger because if you don't do that, um, then you're not going to, then, then you're going to have, you're going to end up with a foamy mess is what it is. So yeah, so that's going to sit, I'm going to put that in the basement just so that it doesn't mix with my up, upstairs air. I, and I'll walk by it every once in a while, give it a little shake. But eventually what will happen is this uh, this foam will kind of settle back down and there's like little bits of eggshells and it will it will re-react with this and this will all just turn into essentially uh, water um, or, you know, water-soluble calcium nitrate or a liquid calcium nitrate. Um, now I'm going to do this in two stages. I'm going to do this. I'm gonna filter with my funnel and coffee filter, uh, and then I'm going to do it. I'm gonna do it again with one tablespoon because that did make a difference. 
Um, so tomorrow I'm going to uh, basically bring the concentration of this up a little bit more. Now I'm doing this because I have tons of backlogged eggshell and I have tons to burn. Like this, this eggshell is going to last me for, for forever. I mean, this, the strength of the calcium nitrate here is super concentrated when I make this stuff. Um, so that's why I really want to start using it because then I can start making my own, um, my own nitrogen, magne magnesium, well, not magnesium, but the uh, phosphates, phosphorus, and stuff like that, The basically what is the master blend mix that I use and just kind of make my own with worm castings. And then all I have to do is buy Epsom salts and I can basically be self-sufficient and make my own hydroponics nutrients. Oh yeah, and um, again, sorry for the shaky camera work. So again, uh, as you can see, this really foams up. So I'm gonna put a cover on this because I don't want dust to fall into this because it's gonna go in my basement stuff, but don't you don't wanna close it. You need to have um, oxygen go in there. I've seen other people actually do this reaction part in a bowl and that's not a bad idea because it gives you the most surface area for the oxygen to, uh... actually that's another chemistry question. I'm not sure if that makes much of a difference, but it does give the, the bubble somewhere to go, I guess. So this is the calcium nitrate solution that I, I reacted with two tablespoons of um, eggshells, then uh, filtered it, and then reacted it again with another uh, tablespoon. If I remember correctly, after the first reaction, the pH is something like 4.5. And it looks like the pH has, uh, that's what you would expect. Uh, the calcium is going to raise the pH. So it definitely reacted. Um, this is filtered. So that's all, whatever. So it definitely, with the, the pH going up, um, it definitely absorbed more calcium. Uh, that's, that's what I would infer by that. Uh, so it looks like it was worth it. It didn't, like most of, most of this solution uh, absorbs, um, you know, absorbs in the first reaction, but it looks like it is worth doing the second reaction. Um, I'm going to have to compare this to the solutions that I make uh, for my hydroponic mix, because if I can just start using this, that's one nutrient I can um, X out.